Behold, the most majestic seagoing vessel ever created, the autonomous Tupperware. The purpose of this project is to test out RDU Rover, because I've never used it before. RDU Rover is a version of RDU Pilot, which is the most common open source flight controller software. And this boat is pretty much the simplest vehicle you can possibly build, as it only has two moving parts, just the two motors and propellers. So after I use this quick and dirty little boat to get the software figured out, I'll build something nicer. But for now, this is a great little platform to do tuning with and kind of figure things out. And also it's a pretty inexpensive vehicle, so I'll do some long range and relatively risky missions towards the end of the video. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, a full service and custom PCB prototyping service. They offer instant quotes, quick turn fabrication, low volume production, and more. Check them out at PCBWay.com. I've spent the last few mornings out here at the lake trying to get this thing tuned in well and able to run waypoint missions on its own without just wandering all over the place. And I think I've got it working pretty well. I built it around a Tupperware storage container because that was the simplest thing to do and I found it in the free pile at work. So I think the first thing I'll do this morning is a waypoint mission around Duck Island. So it'll autonomously drive around the backside of the island and I'll probably lose radio contact, but it should keep going and then eventually make its way back. So I'm gonna go onto my ground control software here and create a waypoint mission. So I'm gonna start over here in this corner and then have it come out around the dock. Then we'll come out here, go around Duck Island. Oh, let's see, I'm gonna go closer to the dock and then I'll pick the boat up right over here in this shallow corner. Now I'm going to come over here and continue the mission. There it goes. It just hit the first waypoint and did a 90 degree turn. It's a little nose heavy right now. I kind of have the batteries slid too far forward, so it's making a funny gurgling noise. It's like it's wandering a little bit there trying to hit the waypoint, but it gets there eventually. I probably have my waypoint radius set a little too small. Looks like we've gone around the backside of the island, but we haven't lost radio link yet. I'm just using these cheap little 900 megahertz telemetry radios. It successfully went around the backside of the island, and it didn't even lose radio link, which is awesome. Come on, little guy, you can make it. Uh-oh, this is bad. It looks like it's having some issues holding its course now. That could be because it got seaweed in the prop. Oh, geez, it's starting to go towards the island. Oh, no. Okay, I don't want it to get too close to the island. I'm gonna set a waypoint directly to the north, and tell it to go to there. Oh good, it's kind of starting to go directly away from the island towards this temporary waypoint. Yep, yeah, this is what happens when it gets seaweed in the prop. It looks like it did get to waypoint 13 and now it's trying to get to waypoint 14, so that's good. It's sort of making progress, but just super, super slowly. It's supposed to be coming towards me, but it's obviously not. I need obstacle avoidance on here. It's going somewhere. Might not be exactly where I want it to, but it's going. Looks like it's doing pretty well, actually. <clears throat> it's heading right towards the last waypoint, which is where I'll go pick it up. Hey, little guy. All right, let's see what's going on. Oh, one motor just isn't spinning. There's no seaweed, though. Okay. Oh, oh, the other motor is working. What is wrong, then? Oh, it's, it's working well now. Maybe... Oh, there is seaweed. Hang on. That's the problem right there, folks. Okay, seaweed is clear. I'm going to put it back in the water. Just put a GoPro on it to do some hyperlapse footage. Uh-oh, we might have a possible collision. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. 
So that worked really well apart from the seaweed, but it definitely took a lot of tuning to get to this point. Let's rewind a bit here and take a look at some of the setup and tuning sessions. YouTubers. At first, I was having some trouble with throttle control and realized that you need RC car ESCs for RD Rover. I was trying to use RC plane ESCs since I didn't need reverse. Today we're making Tupperware float. It already floated, but now we're making it float with style. <laughs> they were testing the shittiest boat <laughs> that mankind has ever created. That's not true. William Osmond has something to say to you about that. <laughs> he may want to have a true. pumpkin. Actually, he made some amazingly shitty <laughs> with the, the one with the gun on it, the paddle, yeah. the spoons. There it okay. goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, well, it doesn't sink. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's cute. Oh, I should have brought oh. googly eyes. Are you doing all the control right now? Oh, geez, stop. No. <laughs> stop. Stop. Uh, I think, long story short here, is there's a bit of a learning curve. It it's controllable, though. I can. Oh, now one of the motors isn't working. The noise is just hilarious. <laughs> it's like gurgling. <laughs> <laughs> We're dead in the water, boys. <laughs> For science. <laughs> Should we try it with a six? <laughs> what is it doing? Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> 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 After spending some time playing with the steering tuning parameters, I got it to the point where it was able to do waypoint missions, but not very well. It was wandering all over the place. I eventually noticed that it would track in a much straighter line when in control modes that didn't use the GPS. It's driving really well in steering mode, which basically just controls the steering rate. But then when I try and do a waypoint mission, it just wanders a ton. This made me realize that the steering problems were actually just from GPS noise. So I just changed this nav L1 period parameter, and that seemed to immediately help a lot. The red path line that shows where the vehicle went still looks really noisy, but I think a lot of that is just GPS drift and GPS noise. Um, and not necessarily vehicle drift. It seems to be going in a pretty straight line when it's running waypoints. Such a slow and maneuverable vehicle is very vulnerable to GPS position error, since it doesn't have any physical inertia or inherent stability keeping it going forward in a straight line. You can imagine that if the GPS keeps telling the autopilot that its position is constantly moving around plus or minus one meter or so relative to the actual position, then the boat will constantly try and achieve that false position reported by the GPS. And this causes the wandering. To fix this, we need to filter the GPS position. And the nav L1 period parameter seems to do just that. The GPS inaccuracy was also causing it to have a hard time maintaining a consistent speed. I fixed this by detuning the velocity control loop a bit and reducing the speed filter frequency down to 2 Hz. After tweaking those parameters, it was working pretty well, so I mounted my GoPro on it and sent it out on a slightly longer mission to build confidence for a super long mission. I'm gonna try a waypoint mission that looks like this. There it goes! See you later, little boat! It's a big world! So I'm not doing a huge waypoint mission this morning because um, there's quite a few people rowing out here on the lake, and they row backwards, so... <laughs> They probably would run into it. Looks like we're about halfway to the first waypoint and we're averaging 0.7 meters per second. That's pretty good for a Tupperware. Almost to the first waypoint and it's holding a pretty damn straight line which is impressive. It's doing great. This thing is tuned very well. Boom! Hit the first waypoint. Going to the second waypoint. It is far out there. I don't even think I can see it. Wow, there it is. Just a little speck. That's hilarious. <laughs> this is so funny. That's not it. That's a duck. Don't mind that Tupperware. It's just going along with a little brain of its own. Looks like we're almost at waypoint number three, and then it'll come. So it's going over that way, then it's going to come back over this way, and then back to me. This thing just cracks me up. It's approaching the next waypoint, so it's going to turn pretty soon. There it goes. Uh-oh, it's trying to come straight to me, <laughs> but there's a dock in the way. <laughs> and it looks like it's just barely going to miss the dock. Awesome. Did the line get that close to the dock in the mission? Yeah, I guess it did. I just didn't notice it. Poor mission planning on my part, but it's working out. Look at that thing. So majestic. So tonight will be the longest mission to date. Inside I've got two 9 amp hour 6 cell batteries, so it'll basically run forever. All the flight controller electronics are inside this sub Tupperware here to keep them extra dry. And then as a backup, I have the Pinpoint RC black box 
that sends the GPS position um, back to my phone via a cellular connection just in case something goes wrong and it gets lost. That will not work, however, if the boat sinks. So fingers crossed that doesn't happen. I also installed a solid white light here and a little strobing red and white light there to see it at night. I'm gonna do this pretty late at night to not draw attention and there won't be any rowers or paddle boarders or anything out on the lake late at night. So it's about 10 o'clock at night here at the lake and I'm up on these bleachers that I think are normally used for like rowing competitions and stuff like that. But I've got the boat here and I'm gonna drop it in the water here pretty soon and do a waypoint mission that goes way out to the middle of the lake. And it should take about an hour total. The water is a little bit choppy right now, so I'm a little bit concerned about that, but we'll see how it does. The mission looks like this. It's pretty straightforward, but there are some buoys out there in the water that I think are also used for rowing. I'm a little concerned about hitting those, but there's no way I can tell where they are relative to the map so it's just luck that I'll hopefully miss them and then I'll put this camera on my tripod here and do a time lapse of the whole thing so that you can see the boat going around in high speed so I am getting very concerned because it seems the boat is way off course and it doesn't really seem like it's trying to get back on course like it's not pointing towards the route. It's just kind of pointing off this way. And if we look over here, we see the average speed is around 0.4 meters per second, which is lower than normal. It's normally at like 0.7. So that makes me think it's fighting the wind quite a bit. So I think I might kind of try something else and click adjust current waypoint to five. So let's see if it's able to make it over here now instead of going to waypoint three. That's kind of more into the wind, I think. So I just adjusted the current waypoint to six. So hopefully it starts making progress going east here. I really hope it doesn't get blown over into these lily pads because that would suck to get it out. If I zoom way in here, it looks like it's going forward, so that's good. Or maybe sideways is more accurate. This whole thing is sketching me out a lot. I'm gonna set the current waypoint to seven um, and kind of abort the mission here. I really need to add some foam to this thing so that it doesn't sink and put some sort of lid over the top so that it can't get water inside. The Pinpoint RC app seems to be working pretty well. It looks like the location that I see in the app matches up pretty accurately with the location reported by the telemetry radio. Okay, this isn't working, so I'm just gonna try putting it in return to home mode and see see if that works. Yes, that worked. Great. Okay, it's coming home. But if the wind is coming from the east, then that means that it could still get blown off course over this way. I sure hope it makes it back. This is stressful. It's definitely not able to go east at all. <laughs> I need a faster boat. It looks like it's actually starting to make a little bit of progress going east, and that's probably because these trees are kind of blocking the easterly wind. Um, and it also kind of seems like it's died down a bit. So this is great. We'll probably make it back to the dock. This is really funny. There's some girls down there on the dock, um, and the boat is kind of going by, and they just must be thinking, what the hell is that thing? This is really funny. Those girls keep trying to get closer to it and they're yelling at it. They think it's like a dog swimming in the water with lights on its head or something. That's so funny. There's a guy on a bike that just rode up to the girls and he said he thought it was a police drone. I'm just trying to keep it kind of going into the wind. It's, it's weird. It seems like there's no wind right here, but it's still not going east very easily at all. So it got close to that dock that they were sitting on and then I drove the boat over here and now they went over there, and now I'm driving back over here and just making them follow it back and forth. They're still talking to it. <laughs> it's really fun. Oh, this is hilarious. They're saying they're gonna trap it. Okay, I'm gonna go intercept it. I'm gonna set a waypoint into the dock and have it drive right into the side. Are you controlling that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, they have no idea what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Hey, do you guys know what that is? Okay, the guy that came over bike he was like it's a police it's a police drone oh <laughs> that's so illegal and he was like take pictures of it it's illegal that's hilarious that's so funny no it's well, mine we thought it was 
was like, we couldn't figure out what the shape was. So we were like, is it a drone that like yeah. fell into the water? It kind of is. It's like the same kind of software that drones use, but it's like obviously not a drone. It's a piece of Tupperware. It's a piece of Tupperware. Oh shit. It's, the, it's That's hilarious. That's so funny. That was such a good waste of time though. We needed a, we needed a good waste oh of time. God. I think this whole project is a good waste of time. I should put some googly eyes on it. Yeah. You, should, you should make it look like a little monster. <laughs> I enjoyed that a lot. So Thank you. <laughs> we'd like call it and like we thought it was coming towards us, so we can't right. <laughs> Well, my little police drone here is back safe and sound. However, there's a big problem here. Look at that. That might have been why it wasn't doing very well at all. Dang, so I need to build some sort of prop protectors or like um impellers or something so that that doesn't happen or i could do an airboat but that's super inefficient anyways i'm super glad to get this thing back in one piece and it's not at the bottom of the lake so that brings us back to the present this thing works pretty well now i'll take these electronics and the knowledge i've learned and transfer it over to a better more capable boat although this tupperware is super cute and i kind of love it maybe it'll be an airboat or some sort of jet boat with inboard propellers i'm not sure but stay tuned thanks for watching bye Again, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Before I was using airplane or multi-rotor ESCs, and I felt like there was some weird stuff going on there because the RDU rover code might be made for ESCs with reverse. So I switched over to these cheap RC car ESCs. I'm not actually sure if that's true. I had calibrated the old ESCs so that the uh, low end of the PWM was actually 1500 or the midpoint, but they still didn't seem to quite work right But then again, this thing doesn't really seem to work right when it's out of the water anyways Because there's a lot of uh, a lot of math going on inside there to control the motors It's not just like taking your stick inputs and passing them through the motors It's like trying to calculate rates and acceleration and stuff like that So I don't know but anyways these RC car ESCs seem to be working better. I also got this big old uh, DC to DC regulator that's way too big. It takes the 24-ish volts from the 6-cell LiPo battery and steps it down to 12 volts for the ESCs. And I only did that because I don't need that much power on this thing. Even with 12 volts, it still has way too much power. So in RDU Pilot, I capped the max PWM to like 1600. So effectively, the ESCs only actually ever see like a tiny bit of throttle increase. Here I've got a little telemetry module. These are 9 100 megahertz 100 milliwatt here's the one that i plug in my computer for the ground control software if we move all this aside and look inside the tupperware i'm using a pixhawk 2.4.8 this is just like a 120 dollar ebay pixhawk kit that i bought and um yeah buying these like ready to go kits is actually a huge time saver because then you don't have to fuss around with doing a lot of soldering and all that i'm just using a little spectrum satellite receiver module for the RC link even though that's not really necessary then just a little power module here that's just measuring voltage basically I'm not actually passing the current through it but that all stays pretty dry in there I'm sick so that's why I sound weird